Good morning and thanks for joining me today. On today's ride I have a rough idea of the route but I'm not sure how far I'm going to go. I'll tell you why a bit further into this ride. As always with my circular routes I have an escape route so if I'm not feeling great I can shorten the route and if I'm feeling good I can lengthen the route. So let's hope I'm feeling good today. I'm just 22 miles into the ride. I'm at Newark, uh, stopped for a little bit of a break and also it started to rain lightly. I hope it'll pass. I haven't bought any waterproofs, but I'm pretty waterproof anyway, so should be okay. I'm riding the Tempest today and this is my preferred bike for the summer. And in fact, uh, my recent Way of the Roses ride, I didn't tell you that I was riding the Tempest. One or two people asked me, where I charge my batteries, but of course I didn't have any batteries. I was the battery. As regular viewers will know, I built the Tempest and many of you were very, very kind and congratulated me on the build. But today I'm gonna to tell you why those congratulations were a little bit premature. I'm also going to tell you about a small disaster I had recently and the amazing way it was resolved. So stick around, join me on the ride and we'll chat as we go. As always, it would be great if you would like and subscribe, it does help. And in these days of rapidly rising prices, it's one thing you get for free. Well, we're now 40 miles into this ride. And for the last 18 miles, I haven't been able to speak to you because it's been pouring with the rain. Well, when I say pouring, it was more heavy drizzle, but it was the sort that soaks you. I was heading north and the rain was ahead of me. I've now turned northeast and I'll soon be turning east and it looks a bit brighter. So we'll grab this opportunity to have a chat anyway, just in case it starts again. I've been back from France for about uh, three weeks now, I suppose. And as you may have seen in my previous video, we had temperatures that reached 41 degrees. It was too hot to go out. Then it was followed by the inevitable thunderstorms and they're pretty vicious there. So consequently, I only managed to get two rides in, totaling about four hours. And that was in the month of June. When I got back, got a couple of rides in. My son visited and uh, we like to ride together. So I was really, really pleased to get the Ribbly assist out because with him he's, he's lightning fast so at least it enabled me to keep up to some extent catch him up on the hills but of course as some of you will know we reached temperatures of 41 degrees C in Lincolnshire uh, very unexpected Well, the rain seems to have disappeared for the moment, so we're on a nice dry track. So it's a good time for me to tell you about my near disaster and how it was miraculously resolved. A couple of weeks back, I was helping our new ride leader in Ellingworth, supporting him on a ride. It was only seven miles, beginner's ride. We had a nice little group and Halfway, I decided to check the temperature on my Garmin Edge, and it wasn't there. 
it had disappeared. I knew I had it with me because I'd been connected to the Varia radar on the road, so it had gone. Now, I didn't use the tether anymore because the tether that came with it had uh, long since worn through and clearly it had either been stolen while the bike was parked in the park while we were briefing everybody. Although the bike was in sight, it wouldn't have taken much for somebody to just whip it off or I'd knocked it off somewhere. Either way, we retraced the route, nothing to be found, it had gone. By this stage I'd given up, I decided uh, I wouldn't be seeing the Garmin again. People as they are these days, you know, if they, if they did find it, they'd probably keep it. I'm pretty cynical that way. So I was quite surprised when I got home that there was a message from somebody I didn't know asking if I or anyone I knew had lost a Garmin Edge. Obviously I replied and said it was me and could I pop round and pick it up, which I did. And this is where the story gets quite interesting. It just so happened that Jason Wright was out for a walk and he spotted a Garmin Edge lying on a path. Being a cyclist himself, he picked it up. He then checked the map to see where the owner had come from. Now fortunately, Jason was a friend of Paul Green. Paul Green tends to know everybody, especially those that are into cycling. So he asked Paul if he knew anybody that lived in my village. And Paul said yes he did, he knew me. He also said that he knew I was out on a guided ride that morning and would be on the route where Jason found the Garmin Edge. And that's how they managed to contact me. When I called round to pick it up and met Jason, he explained to me his superb detective work and he said that if he hadn't have found me, he was going to travel to our village and knock on doors in our street. Now that is above and beyond. So I know Jason is now a subscriber. So although I've thanked him, I'll thank him publicly. You're a star player and it's just lucky that somebody honest and who understood how to interrogate the Garmin found it. When Jason told me where he'd found it, I realized what had happened. It was at a junction. I'd got off my bike to see people across the road and I guess I'd caught it and it had fallen off and I hadn't heard it. So all's well that ends well. Of course, I'm now making sure the Garmin is tethered because I don't think I'll be as lucky next time I drop it to have somebody like Jason find it. What I'm using are these wire tethers. I first saw these when CyclePal supplied me with a part and it had one of these tethers fitted to it. I now use that to tether the Garmin Varia. So I bought some more. I think they cost me about seven pounds for a selection of 20 of various lengths. And as you can see, one end screws in. Uh, so it's the sort of thing that wouldn't be easy for somebody to just pull off. Uh, they'd have to actually unscrew the thing or at least have some wire cutters to cut them. So hopefully they'll do the trick. And I hate to say it, but I think it started to rain again. Oh, yeah. Well, 50 miles in now and feeling quite good. The rain has stopped and it's dry on this track. So there's been no rain here. It's really pleasant. Temperature's 15 degrees. So it's pleasant for riding. The route we're on now is going to take me into Lincoln and then I'll make a decision. I'll probably go through Lincoln onto the water railway and head back home that way. We'll see how we feel. I'll give you a quick update. We're nearly 70 miles in. I'm now in Bardney. I've just popped over the road here to the world famous Butcher of Bardney and I've got two of their very special 
hot sausage rolls, so that should keep me going. Look at those, that's a proper sausage roll. Now I talked about my routes always having an escape route so I can shorten it, but now at 70 miles in, I'm now out of escape routes, so it's only one way back. So I would imagine today is going to be over 100 miles now. I'm feeling surprisingly fresh, considering I haven't done very much riding over the past couple of months. So uh, let's hope I get back okay. The weather's been a bit drizzly on and off. I didn't check the weather before I came out, otherwise I'd have known it was going to be wet. And in truth, I probably wouldn't have come out. So it's probably just as well I didn't look at the weather because it's been a really pleasant ride so far. From here, uh, Bardney, I'm going to take the summer route, which is a bit of a track. Uh, Paul Green and I actually did it inadvertently during the winter, but uh, it's not to be recommended in the winter, but uh, see what it's like in the summer. Then going to go down to Woodall Spa and then back across country to Grantham. While we're on this nice quiet trail, it's a good time for me to tell you why your praise for me building the Tempest was misplaced. When I built it, I did have a problem with the chain in that when I was on the big ring to big ring, everything was too tight. And when I was on small ring to small ring, it was all loose and flapping about. Couldn't understand it. As I don't go into those extremes of cross-chaining, I left it as it was. Everything was fine, it was all working well, indexing nicely. I've done a lot of miles like this, including the coast to coast, but it still wasn't right. It turns out that I'd done something very dumb. And it was even more dumb of me because I have two other bikes with the 105 rear derailleur fitted. Had I just looked at those, I'd have realized that I was 45 degrees out on fitting the bracket. Now I had the bracket fitting vertically, but it should have been about 45 degrees pointing backwards. Took it off, adjusted it, job done. And really I should have been paying much more attention. But apart from that, everything else on the bike is running perfectly. Those of you that watch my Way of the Roses series will know that uh, on the second to last day I developed a click and it was a really annoying click. I took the chain off, re-lubed it and it seemed to cure it but then it came back so I decided to get to the bottom of it whatever it took. So about a week ago I worked through the bike everything I could think of. I took the cassette off, took the bottom bracket off, re-greased it, checked the stem, checked the pedals. I even put new cleats on in case they were clicking. Nothing cured it. And if you've had a click, you'll know how annoying it is. My usual go-to when I have a click is the saddle, but I knew it wasn't the saddle because pedaling standing up still had the click. On the last test I did, I noticed that it was only when I put pressure on the right hand pedal that I got the click. I'd already checked that it was tight, but when I put an Allen key on it to check the torque, I realized it wasn't as tight as it should have been. So I whipped it off, re-greased the threads, tightened it back up, click gone. Now, I suppose you could argue if I'd have checked the simple thing first, it would have saved me some time. But I figured that it's not a bad thing to go through the bike and make sure everything's lubed and tight. So I don't think it was a waste of time. But so far, we're now 78 miles into this ride. Touch wood, everything's going swimmingly. I was on one of these narrow roads, in one of my previous videos, and uh, an American subscriber asked in a horrified tone, 
is that a two-way road? And yes, it is. My uncle was over from Corpus Christi in Texas many years ago. And of course, he thought he was sitting on the wrong side anyway. And he was horrified. Every time a car came towards him, he closed his eyes. But yep, that's how things go. People are usually fairly careful on these sort of lanes, but you do get the odd crazy. As you can see, it's very flat around here. We're in the fens. The fact that it was flat and its proximity to the coast meant that it was a favored area for bomber airfields, which is why it's known as Bomber County. I don't know if you can see that, but we've just clicked over the 100 miles. Got about uh, probably seven miles to go, I would think. Uh, climbed a fair bit since we were in the fens. You can probably see around here, it's quite rolling countryside. And you'll see in a moment, we've got a really nice downhill. You can see here I'm using the Restrap frame bag. Bought this a while ago and I did say I'd mention it. I, I, I do like it. it. This is the small bag and it only just fits in this frame, which is the small frame of the Tempest. If I open it up, you'll see that my you'll see that my drone and controller both fit in there all folded up. So it's ideal. I can carry that with me without too much hassle bag's waterproof it's got various little pockets inside and of course we've got the same on the other side and there I keep my phone and other bits and pieces and I've got this small top tube bag I use just to put batteries in and uh, carry my power pack so that I can top up the Garmin uh, and the the Varia because I've found on a long ride they don't quite make it one of the things I really like on the bike is the position of the water bottle. Now, as you know, I got this uh, Volo bar extender. Uh, the one thing I found with the bar extender is that uh, even with their branded water bottle holder with a, a large bottle in, the weight was pushing the mount round. So what I've done here is I've just drilled a hole and put a self-tapping screw through and that's solved the problem. So a little bit of fettling and we're all okay. Of course, one of the benefits of the climbing we've just done to climb up out of the fens is that we get some downhill as well. It's just a shame that after this, I've got to go uphill again to get home. Looks like the day's going to end at about 107. It's quite a pleasant surprise to be able to break the 100 considering how little I've ridden in the past couple of months. I must admit I'm a bit tired. Legs are aching a bit, but uh, that's to be expected. But I'll say goodbye to you now and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this video. And if you do, please give it a like and hopefully you'll subscribe. But I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Got a couple of interesting things coming up, I think. Interesting to me anyway. So uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now and ride safely.